So this is my new solar oven that I built completely from scratch. You put stuff in here that you want to cook. You can angle the oven higher or lower with this stick. You can lock the reflector onto the base. Altogether, it costs about 200 bucks. Most of the wood and screws and stuff I already had. But the main things that cost money was this light reflector that came with a piece of tempered glass. And then I bought like the aluminum foil, the foam board, this lasagna pan. But 200 bucks. In the comments and description below, I'll have a link to the exact light fixture reflector that I purchased. And in this video, I'm gonna show the construction. So this is what I started with. It's a cardboard prototype. I set the blade so it's up just a tiny little bit. And it creates a channel so I can fit the glass inside of it. So it's a wooden frame with the glass inside and little pickup handles custom made I removed some of the metal tubing duct created these wooden plugs and I removed the light socket metal thing and created a little piece of metal that fills that spot. And here's the back side. This used to be a cut out hollow spot. And I put that piece of metal in there with some high temperature silicone. So I'm making good progress. I've made the little frame to hold the reflector. I'm using cardboard as insulation to fill the voids. And they say this is really good because there's a whole bunch of little honeycomb hollow spots and it's non-toxic. It won't off gas anything poisonous as it heats up. And this is what it's gonna look like inside the cavity. There's a good amount of space for insulation. Install these on the bottom as riser feet. And I can easily slide it around to adjust. I fabricated these pieces of metal that go on the inside edge. 
And as the sunlight is reflected down into the reflector, it'll bounce onto this and conduct heat. And this is because my little metal pan, it doesn't reach as far. So I added some extensions because I think a little bit of the light would like bounce out and this captures the heat. In addition to the cardboard, I'm putting a few layers of aluminum foil as a heat barrier. I use this cut up cardboard as insulation to fill the rest of the void. I made this little sundial and what you do is you want to get that shadow directly in the center so you know that the sunlight is coming directly into the oven. So that would be the perfect spot right there. And I mounted it on the inside wall and I tilt and adjust until that shadow is right in the center. Perfect alignment. I ended up painting that black so it doesn't reflect the sun but absorbs it. I added some little pickup handles. This is my adjustment stick. It's got a long edge and a shorter edge. And I can adjust it to hit the sun. sun's really high, I can adjust it this way. Cutting the reflector pieces out of this foam board. Picked up some wood trim from Home Depot. Picked up some bags of hardware from Walmart. Fabricated these L brackets. Finished with the overall design. It's got these little plates that keep it in position. It's firmly connected with little movement stops. It's super sturdy and lightweight. Around the back, I have this little locking mechanism. This is a piece of a chain link. And if a wind, strong gust of wind comes through, this thing is solidly connected. Made these little protective hand grips. 
So the only thing left now is to cover it with reflecting material. And what I'm going to try is this emergency blanket. It's aluminized and it's super highly reflective. So I unfolded the emergency blanket, but I don't think this is going to work because it's actually see-through. You can see the window through it. It's very transparent. So the reflectivity is probably really low. After a bunch of research, I'm going to try heavy-duty aluminum foil. This stuff is supposed to be over 90% reflective. And what I like about it is you can wash it and replace it for pretty cheap. So this is the original cardboard prototype and the new finished reflector. And the prototype cardboard would get to a maximum of about 275 degrees. Here's the new reflector in place. It's been here about 40 minutes and it's pretty impressive. So far it's 350 degrees maximum temperature. I can use a moist sponge to wipe off dust. I bought this blanket for $2.50 from Walmart. This protects the reflector from dust and dirt and pollen. Now that I've got this little cart, I can store it facing away from the sun and then easily spin it around when I'm ready to cook something. I'm actually very fortunate that my garage is facing directly south. So I can keep it right here in the garage. I don't have to worry about stray rain showers or anything. This is the perfect spot for it. I made it where it can be easily disassembled in case a liquid spills in it. I can replace the insulation or a bad piece of wood. Got it all painted. If I ever have to take apart the reflector and replace the aluminum foil, I'll paint this white so it's matching. Depending on the angle that I have to set the oven at, I have some little adjusters that are just bent pieces of metal. And to make this level, I can use this one. And if the oven's tilted up higher, I can use this one. And this can be spun that direction to get it up even higher. I can use this piece if I have a mug so it's got flatter coverage. I use these clips to hold the blanket in place and they latch onto this wooden brace. But what I've learned so far is this thing is awesome. I can't imagine not having it now that I've lived with it for a little while. I'll show one little trick that I learned. 
well it'll get 350 degrees with the reflector I can heat cans of soup right here with just the oven itself this has enough sun collecting area where it'll get up to 225 degrees and that's the perfect temperature to heat up canned goods Ooh, it's hot. In the next couple weeks, I'll have more videos with the solar oven. I'll bake cookies. I'll cook some eggs. I might even try to bake a steak. See what other stuff I can cook in here with the solar oven.